pack a bowl, my friend, and don't forget to pass the blend. Pack it up, my friend, and then we'll wind up and we'll smoke in the ashes in the end. Pack a bowl, my friend. Me that blend, would you? Welcome back in, y'all. Um, it is good to see you. Uh, last week I was unable to make a video, but we're back here uh, today. Uh, gonna do it. Gonna gonna <laughs> gonna try to get her done uh, today. Uh, last week, real busy weekend, y'all. And I, by the time I got in the house after doing everything I had to do, I just gave up. I sat in my favorite chair, lit up the pipe, and got maybe halfway through the pipe, and I fell asleep uh, on the couch. And those things happen. Uh, so, what do you know? Anyways, we're back here today, and we're going to talk about some projects I'm on. Um, and... Uh, Things such of that nature, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today I'm smoking a pipe that a good friend of mine here in Dallas gave me. Um, he used to be a pipe smoker. Uh, I don't know. I think he said it was about 10 years ago, if I recall. And um, so I was over at his house one time, and he says, Hey, you want my old pipe? And I said, Well, if you're not using it, sure. Uh, so he got it out and gave me a nice little cigar box with it and some other things. And uh, this is the pipe here. Now, it's about, it, it looks like an acorn. It's rusticated on the bottom. A very large bowl, y'all. I'd say this is at least 22 millimeters. And it's probably at least 40 millimeters uh, deep. So this bowl is something you pack up and you sit back for quite some time. Um... Got a very, very thin fishtail uh, stem on it. Now, I don't know. He couldn't tell me. Um, and I can't see where who makes this pipe. Nowhere on this pipe uh, does it say a maker's name. Uh, now, on the stem right here in the back, it does say, and I highly doubt y'all could see that, even if I put it up at the camera. Um... Yeah, right about right in there. The stem says France. So I'm going to, you know, say it was made in France. Unless just the stem was made in France. I don't know. Um, so if y'all know of any, if you think you know, maybe the brand of this pipe, let me know. I'd be interested uh, in knowing. But it is uh, says it's from France. Um, so that's all I know. Other than that, it's a very nice pipe. Um, and like I said, you can sit back for a long time with what you can pack into this bowl, um, and, uh, hunker down. There you go. And in the pipe, in honor of Satan's favorite holiday, well, not really honoring, but just cause it is the holiday, I suppose. Coming up here, All Hallows Eve, I am smoking the Haunted Boo Shop. Um, there you go for the occasion. Um, and it's a uh, good stuff, y'all. Yeah, I think Haunted Bookshop really needs no introduction. Um, uh, for those of us, um, out there, uh, we definitely know about Haunted Bookshop. If you don't, give it a try. It's a heavy perique blend. Um, it's basically, y'all, from what I can tell from the ingredients, it's basically Sinead's cake, but in a ribbon cut. They both got the same uh, agree ingredients. Um, how you know how much of each ingredient? I don't know, but they basically taste almost the same to me. So you know, on a bookshop, unless you get it in a cake form, uh, is a ribbon cut. And uh, so uh, to me, that's why I think I like it, um, or grew to like it. Because if you all recall, those of you that have been with me for quite some time, you know my first taste. Of haunted bookshop uh, wasn't 
the best, but I grew to like it and quite possible. That's why I grew to like and overcome, uh, on a bookshop with my favorite blend, Sinead's cake. Um, so that's what we're, that's what we got going on here. Y'all pipe from France with the haunted bookshop in there and, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Let me light it up and we'll continue on. Got some projects to talk about. That's that ladder I told you that kind of goes crazy. A um, little crazy here, y'all. For the first time, my wife has bought me a treat earlier and um, bought me a cup of coffee. Normally, I, I mean, I haven't had a cup of coffee from anywhere but the house in about the last five years, I'd say, or longer. But there's new this new little coffee shop opened up, mm, I don't know, about three, four miles from the house. And uh, she decided to try them. Said she was curious. And uh, it's a great little coffee here, y'all. So that's what I'm having today. I have no idea the brand of coffee. <laughs> uh, it's called Scooters. Scooters Coffee. That's all I know. Um, but it's pretty good. But, um... Got one thing here to show you real quick, though. If y'all recall, uh, Mr. Mark Cox uh, made an outstanding uh, pie, uh, tobacco valet. And, um, man, it just looked so good. One day I got this email from him, and he said, Johnny, would you like that valet? And, uh, hmm, what else could I say, y'all? Well, if you're willing to send it, I'm willing to use it, <laughs> and I'm very proud to have it, y'all. But uh, Mr. Mark Cox did send me that valet that he made. Um, and he had the laser etching done on it. Uh, it says tobacco with some tobacco leaves there. And uh, his little stamp up here in the top uh, says Mark Cox. Uh, he's out of Oklahoma, y'all, um, just above us here. And uh, just a wonderful valet. It just, mm, good stuff. The way he formed it and everything. So I'm very proud to have it. Um, I thanked him by email. But once again, Mr. Mark Cox, thank you very much. I am proud to have it. Thank you, sir. But good stuff there. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, I went ahead and I, uh, if you all recall, Mr. Ronnie Adams won the Build-A-Pipe um, giveaway. And that's where I'm going to be building a pipe uh, with the options that the winner chooses, um, along with a special wrap for it and everything. I went ahead and got started on that, but before I got started on it, I realized I needed to talk uh, to Mr. Ronnie Adams. So um, I got a hold of him briefly. He called me back, and we talked for a little bit. Nice little conversation. And uh, he told me that he was just a simple guy. He wants a simple build. I said, okay, that's what we'll do for you, Mr. Ronnie, if that's what you want. And um, so that's what I started doing here this weekend, y'all, amongst other things. We got a lot of rain here in Dallas, so it's a muddy mess back in my pasture. And, uh, um, trying to make a nice, decent area by the barn so the cows and horse don't. Don't slip and slide in the mud because it rained really hard here, y'all. Really hard. It flooded in some areas. Uh, fortunately, where we live, uh, we live on a very, very top of the hill. So if it floods, it all goes away from the house. So it's good stuff for us. Unfortunate for those who live down the hill. You have to climb, you know, when you're coming up my road, you're climbing up a, a steep hill to get up into my little community here. Um, just out in a suburb of uh, Dallas, but yeah, crazy stuff. So I was out tramping around the mud today, doing some things. But um, after that, we got started. Uh, I got started. I don't know why I said we. Hmm. Must have been somebody else helping me. I don't know. But I got started on Mr. Ronnie Adams' pipe. Now I got some pictures, a couple videos to show you of how I got started on it. And uh, we'll get into that just in a second. 
Uh, let's get there right now, I think. So, now, anyways, this is my messy garage, y'all. So, okay, if you got a nice, neat, organized garage, that's good for you. <laughs> Mine's not that bad, not that way. Um, but I'm getting ready to basically here, um, get that pipe <clears throat> kind of traced out, figured out where I'm going to start cutting off some of the excess uh, before we start shaping it into uh, the pipe. Um, so you can see right there, it's just a block uh, with some unfinished areas. And we're going to start going ahead. Um, here, uh, getting on that. Okay, so let's get to the next video right here. So, um, I end, it's a little, little boring right here, y'all. I end up deciding that I'm going to go ahead and change out my blade. I'm going to scroll saw right there. Um, always nice to start, if, especially if you got a nice project you're going to work <clears throat> Always nice to start out with a fresh blade, uh, so you know that you uh, you're not gonna have any problems. Because I have started out with terrible blades before, and yeah, I paid the price. So you know, hey, you learn a lesson. I'll learn till the day I'm dead. That's for sure. But anyways, uh, I get this blade uh, changed out. And um, nice little scroll saw I have right there. Um, my bandsaw is broken, so I'm using the scroll saw. It works. It works just fine. Um, get that brand new blade set up in there. Um, and go to town on this piece of wood. Yeah, that haunted bookshop's good stuff, y'all. But we're here. I'm just gonna cut away at this thing, trying to take ma majority of the of the wood I don't want. Uh, you know, it's less sanding I have to do, the less carving I have to do, uh, the better for me. And I like videos, y'all, because it gives me a chance to smoke some of this bowl. <laughs> I ain't talking so much. Now, I try to be as safe as I can when I'm doing this, but y'all, if you see my fingers get close to that blade, that's, uh, that's the way I do it. It's not right. I know that. Um, I've, yeah, I've cut myself a couple times. I'm ready for it. Let's go on. I got another one here. Now, this is where I'm going to go ahead and put it on my sander. I've taken away the majority of uh, the chunks of wood that I want away from the bowl of the pipe and the mortise tenon area. And I'm going to go ahead and start sanding it on my little sander, kind of shaping it, uh, roughing it out before I do some of the fine tuning. Um, we'll, and we'll see that. Y'all notice there I'm smoking my country gentleman. 
And I'm pretty sure I got Sinead's cake in there. Cup of coffee, of course. Let's go on back, grab another one. Now this is just a picture. Show you a little bit of the grain um, in the wood. Um, it's, it's olive wood. I forgot to tell you all that. It's olive wood, so... Um, you see a little bit of the grain. It's not like a you know briar where you've got those nice bird's eye and fire in there. Um, but the olive wood does give us a nice little grain here. Um, and we'll go ahead and show. We'll get sanding away on this thing a little more. Here we go. So I'm just going to sand away on this thing. Um, I got a coarse belt on there right now. Uh, later on, I put on a, a finer belt so I can get into little nooks and crannies without rip snorting through the wood. Now I suppose this video is going to be kind of long, y'all. I told, I told y'all, and a lot of y'all said that you didn't mind long videos. So that's good. That's good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, keep on sanding on this thing. Ah, uh, let's get on to another one. Okay, right there's a picture. So right there it's going to show you, uh, kind of roughed it in. Um, give you an idea. Before I, I think, I think here we're going to go in the house here in a minute. And I whip out my fine tools. And we, I go ahead and uh, fine tune it all up. And that's okay, there we are. So here's another picture of me. I uh, got my little die grinder out there and with a nice coarse bit on it and uh, shaping out and cleaning up the areas uh, that I couldn't get with the belt sander. This little tool that I have right here, y'all, that little tool, um, I love it. That little thing, it's got so many attachments to it, I can just... Cut and buff and stand and do all kinds of stuff with that little tool. It's 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 awesome. I love that thing. Like I said, my wife gave it to me. So, mm, good stuff. And uh, my wife took this video here of me. But yeah, I'm going to let me see. Can I make this a little bigger? Yeah, I can. So you can see me getting in all the nooks and crannies there and shaving it away a little bit. Now, Mr. Ronnie, he wanted this thing just smooth, so I didn't rusticate it. And if I would have rusticated it, I would have used different bits to leave large gouges in it and all that good stuff. Um, here is a picture of, basically, before I started sanding it, what she looks like. Right there. Let's see. Hmm. Kind of hard to see. You can see some grain. So the grain goes um, a horizontal. Um and that's good that's good follows the bowl and um later on when i stain it it kind of takes away from the grain but you can still see some of the grain uh now in the back here mr ronnie chose this piece of brown acrylic uh as a stem 
and I'll be making him a P-lip later on um, out of that block of acrylic that you see right here on the table. There's another picture of it. Kind of see some grain in there right now. Just a little bit. And right here on the end of the shank area, the mortise tenon area, uh, I'll be putting a silver VOP cap on that. Um, so we'll have a wedge stem, P-lip stem that will go in there, top it all off. Now right here I decided to go ahead and since Mr. Ronnie didn't say what color he wanted it, but since we had a brown stem, I felt it only fitting that we uh, go ahead and dye the pipe uh, with that brown dye. Now, as y'all can as have seen before, I do use Freibing's uh, leather dye. Uh, this seems to be something that, through my research, a lot of pipe builders use a leather dye to dye their pipes. Um, so, I'm a leather worker. I just happen to have this dye. So there we go. I was good to go and went ahead and decided to go ahead and start dyeing her up brown. And there's the rough, um, roughed in of it, um, dyed brown. You can still see a little bit of the grain, even though the dye really soaked in. I mean, this wood wanted that dye. It soaked it up so quickly. Uh, I, I think I gave it two or three coats of uh, dye right there. And uh, certain areas uh, where you had a branch or a node of the wood coming off, um, you can always tell uh, in olive, well, in most woods, because it doesn't take to the stain as well as the other areas. So this area right here, I'm assuming was a branch or root area um, in the wood. But it all works out in the end, y'all. So that's basically where I'm at on Mr. Ronnie. And I'm going to show you uh, the what I did on that. But before we get to that, uh, my brother here in Texas, uh, one of the viewers, uh, he's further south than myself. Uh, he wanted a knife sheath for his uh, father's knife. And um, said he had his father's knife, but no sheath for it. So we talked through email, and I told him, I said, you know what, send me an outline in the mail of your father's sheath, I mean, your father's knife, and I'll do my best to make you a sheath that will complement your father's knife. And um, so in between uh, clear coating Mr. Ronnie's pipe, which I'll show you here in a minute, um, well, I had some downtime waiting for the clear coat to dry enough to where I could sand it in between coats. And I decided to go ahead and start making a knife sheath uh, for Mr. Stevo. His name is Robo Stevo, uh, if you see him in the comments there. But... Um, so since he is from Texas, my Tex Texan brother here, um, I decided to put one lone star there. Of course, I textured the middle area and the outside area is just uh, smooth. Hand sewn and um, done up. So like I said, he traced his father's knife uh, and that's how I used that as a template to make this knife sheath. Uh, hand sewn. Sewed it all together. Um, that's about the only way I can. I personally would rather do a knife sheath because you're going to have the thicker area here where the blade sits against it. And um, so that's seven, eight ounce leather. And when you put three of those, stack those together, uh, that's a very thick portion of the sheath. So I hand sew and glue all that. And then on the edges, uh, Mr. Mark Cox and I think Mr. Michael Morrison will know about these things as they have, well, we know Mr. Mark Cox works with leather and Mr. Michael Morrison said he did too. But they'll know about this tool right here. This, this is called a slicker. 
And then what you do is you put some gum tagging or uh, sometimes you can just use water or since it's damp from the stain and you use this tool right here to burnish the edges uh, of the leather to give it a nice smooth and somewhat shiny uh, edge um, on the leather itself. And there basically is the finished product um, after I got done. I put the uh, little cutouts of his dad's knife inside there. Made sure that it was going to work out right. I put a nice Chicago screw here on the side to keep that. Because that of course is where the blade is going to slide in. And sometimes what I found on knife sheaths right where the blade slides in. Uh, you end up cutting and cutting and cutting. Uh, and then eventually you cut through and can cut the the threading or the leather so uh in the interest of making it last somewhat a lifetime i put a chicago screw right here with a little bit of loctite um, so as the blade slides in if it should hit this area um, it's not going to damage the area right there and uh does really well that's what i've been doing to all my knife sheaths and it works fine for me um Every once in a while, your blade may run across the inside of this thing, and you have to sharpen it a little bit. But hey, always good to go back and keep a nice fine edge on your blade anyways. But that right there is for Mr. Robo steve -O. Um, If you're watching me, Mr. Steve, I'll go ahead and get that sent out to you here uh, pretty soon. And of course, on the back side, I got to use my hand stamp. And... Um, it says handcrafted by the Johnny P. So I had fun doing that, but let's get back to the main screen, y'all. And I'm going to show you, um, I have it down here. It's still, I think it's still basically drying. Um, so I've got it on this stick of wood, but this is Mr. Ronnie Adams pipe. And um, I don't know if y'all can see, she's turning out real nice, real shiny. And um, <clears throat> by the way, y'all, this is my super long tamper <laughs> that I decided to use. Um, it's, you know, I can, I can uh, tamp my, my tobacco down. But I reached around and I, and I saw it and I said, you know what? I'm going to put the pipe on there um, while I have it in the vise. And uh, in between uh, lacquer coatings, I went ahead and used the fine steel wool and steel wooled it all down. Blew it all off, wiped it down with a tack cloth, and then went back again and sprayed it all up really good. I think I got about five coats on this thing. And before I get done, I'll probably throw it in the buffing wheel and buff her out to just a glass finish. Really nice. Now I use a wine cork in the end uh, to keep uh, any uh, a lacquer from going inside of the of the bowl right there. So that worked out really good for me. Um, in the past, I've used tape, uh, but I thought this time, you know what, we got wine corks because my wife likes wine um i don't really do wine y'all I'm, I'm basically a beer man whiskey man but um we had wine corks i went ahead and stuck that in there and worked out really great for me um but we'll get this thing buffed out and that's where we're at when it comes to mr ronnie's pipe um so far it looks really nice y'all looks really good let's take this off here i can handle the edge of it because the edge of it is going to get that uh, silver band anyways um, yeah so we're gonna get silver band here uh, before we put uh, get the stem all set up for it but I'm happy with the way it's turned out y'all it's turned out real nice you if you look real close you can see some of the wood grain uh, I doubt y'all be able to see it on the camera um, but looks real nice I am excited to see how it turns out. Uh, a little jealous, too, because this pipe is turning out really nice, Mr. Ronnie. I hope you 
um, are excited to get it, sir. But I am very happy with the way she's turning out. Get this thing back up here. Still just a tad bit tacky. We'll let that dry out overnight. And then we'll get her buffed out real pretty. Probably won't do a, a main buffing until I get uh, the silver band on it. And everything going on there. And then when we get done with the pipe, like I said in the end, we're going to go ahead and make uh, Mr. Ronnie a nice custom pipe wrap uh, for it. Now, Mr. Ronnie did have a request, and I am willing to oblige him. Mr. Ronnie recalled the one of the first pipe wraps I made, and I ended up um, giving it away, and Mr. Greg Tunnel, of all people, was the one to win it. And, um, but I had mentioned that I wished I had made it a little thicker. So, of course, Mr. Ronnie Adams says, you remember that pipe wrap you made that you thought, you know, could be thicker? He goes, I would really like something like, you know, that out of that material. So, I have some of that material left, some of that leather. Uh, it's a snakeskin leather looking. And uh, we're going to make him a pipe wrap out of that once we get done uh, with uh, his pipe and all that's done. But uh, so that'll be further on down the line here. Um, we'll, we'll I'll get started on his stem probably uh, this week, and I'll take pictures of that. Maybe a couple of videos. Uh, me turning the stem and then drilling out and shaping the P lip and getting it all done up. Um, and then the silver bands they're supposed to come in I think this week. Um, yeah, we'll get that put on there with some epoxy. Get her all shined up. Looking really good. Get that pipe done and we'll move on to the pipe wrap, like I said. Once I get done with all that, y'all, then I'll probably do up another pipe wrap. Uh, and this will be for the channel's giveaway. Um, that's for sure, because I do have some good material that you know I showed you before uh, that I want to go ahead and make up. Um, and we'll give that away. But yeah, always something going on here at the house, y'all. If it ain't my homestead, you know, I'm out in the garage, I'm in my craft room doing crafting, uh, doing stuff. Um, I tell my wife I need to change out the shocks on my truck. So there's just, <laughs> just always something to do around my place, y'all. Um, yeah, but um, definitely not a boring time. Um, but anyways, uh, let me light up this pipe and, uh, we'll figure out something. If not, I'm probably, uh, going to be coming to an end here. Mm -mm -mm. That lighter just went out. Let's grab one of these. Oh, wow, y'all. So I pinched my thumb. With a pair of pliers um if y'all have ever ever done that you know it's a, a blood blister right there on the end of my thumb uh I, with a pair of pliers i was holding the pliers and sometimes right there on the back side of the pliers if your thumb's right there and you're pinching down mm, and your pliers slip yeah that'll get you real good and it just so happens <laughs> that it got me right where i would flick that bit <laughs> And, um, yeah, that don't feel too good. That one don't work. Stand by. Grab another one. There we go. And it hurts, y'all. Damn it. Tried to use my finger. Not, not that good. How many of you out there got like probably five, six, ten lighters sitting around your place? Um, for when one goes out, you got more. I got my two Zippos up in here too. Yeah, I got those. Got to have lighters. Um, but yeah, so flooded out here in Dallas. Um, not really in my neck of the woods. Not so bad. Um, we definitely got a lot of rain, and we needed it. We definitely did need the rain here. There's no doubt. Um, 
a lot of people stock ponds and and the lakes and things of that nature they definitely needed the they needed the wood they need the the uh the water that's for sure um i have water collection barrels around my place they got filled up filled up so that was good but um yeah so always something to do like i said uh mr stevo here is your knife wrap sir your uh, knife sheath and we're going to get that sent out to you and once again mr mark cox thank you for the valet i appreciate it and sooner or later i guess i got mr mark cox valet that means i could probably give away mine if anybody would like it um let me know uh my uh tobacco valet but um uh, yeah we're good to go y'all thanks for stopping by thanks for uh talking with me for a little bit i appreciate you as always and uh we'll get back next week and i'll show you probably uh, a lot of progress on mr ronnie's uh pipe and things of that nature but y'all take care of yourselves um yeah until next week we'll see you pack a bowl my friend and don't forget to pass that plan pack it up my friend and then we'll me that blend, would you?